Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenz and today we're going to talk about problem set 1 credit. So in this problem, we're going to receive a credit card number and we need to check if it's valid or not. If it's not valid, we're going to print out invalid. If it's valid, we're going to check what is the card, what is the, the flag of the card. So if it's Visa, if it's Master or, or if it's Amex, this is what we have to do. Okay, so how can we check if a credit card number is valid or not? We're going to use here this loans algorithm. We're going to see in details how it works and we're going to implement step by step. But for now, before we see this implementation, let's start by just getting the credit card number in our code. So how can we get the credit card number? We know that the credit card number will contain 15 digits or more, maybe 13, 14, 15, but it will be a long number. So here we're going to define our variable as long. And here I'm going to say credit card. And we're going to use the function get long to get the credit card number. So remember that the get long is similar as the get in to the get string of a CS50. But here we're already defining what will be the type of our credit card. So here I'm going to say credit card. And let's see if it's working. Then I'm going to print F. Actually, I'm not going to print F. Let's just see if it's working. So here make credit. Let's see. No buts. So if I run dot forward slash credit, we're being asked here. I'm going to put a huge number and it's getting. Now let's understand how this LUMS algorithm works. Let's break it down into more pieces and then we're going to start applying here in our code. LUMS algorithm is a checksum formula used to validate credit card numbers. To determine if a credit card number is valid, you first multiply every other digit by 2, starting from the second to last digit. Next, you add the sum of the product's digits to the sum of the digits that weren't multiplied by 2. Finally, if the total sum's last digit is 0, the credit card number is valid. For example, let's consider this credit card number. Starting from the second to last digit, we'll multiply every other digit by 2. Now, let's add those products' digits, not the products themselves, together. We can see here that the sum is 22. We then add the sum of the product's digits to the sum of the digits that weren't multiplied by 2. Finally, we check if the total sum's last digit is 0. Since 60 ends in 0, the credit card number is valid according to LUMS algorithm. Now, how can we get the last digit of the credit card number? In a division, the remainder is the integer left over after dividing one integer by another. For example, when we divide 12 by 10, the remainder is 2 and the quotient is 1. If we think about another example, like dividing 456 by 10, the remainder is 6 and the quotient is 45. With that in mind, we're able to get the last digit of our credit card number by dividing it by 10, because the remainder of the division will always be the last digit of the number. We first need to get every other digit, then we're going to multiply this every other digit by 2, and if the number is, if the product here it has 2 digits, we're going to sum these digits, or if the product is not 2 digits, we're only going to uh, sum the digit of the product. And then we add the sum to the sum of the digits that weren't multiplied by 2, so first we're going to get this every other digit and multiply by 2, and then we're going to get the remaining digits of our credit card and sum them, and then we're going to sum all of this. If the total's last digit is zero, this means that the credit card is valid. If it's different than zero, this means that it's not valid. We're going to start by getting every other digit. So here we're going to get this every other digit is starting with this number second to last digit. So we want to get here the number one, not the number four. Then we're going to skip the zero and get the other zero, skip one, get the other, skip one, get the other, and so on. Every time we want to get the last digit of a number, we can divide the number by 10 and use the remainder to get the last digit. So every time we're dividing by 10, we are shrinking the number, and when we use the remainder, we're always getting the last digit. So let's start applying. I'm going to create a function that I'm going to call int every other digit, and we're going to receive a long number that will be our credit card. This is our start. And since I created the function here, remember that we have to add a prototype at the top of our code. Otherwise, when we're running here the main function, we might give an error for us. So what are we going to do in this every other digit? I want to create a variable that I'm going to sum all the numbers. All right, so I'm going to sum all of this every other digit. So here's sum. I'm going to initialize at zero. And we're going to do a while loop. So we know that when we start dividing the number 10, at some point this number will become zero. So we're going to do a while loop that we're going to loop until this number is greater than zero. Once this number is not greater than zero, this means that we, run, we check all the digits we have in our card and we're able to go to the next one. 
So let's see in here. I'm going to do a while. Credit card is greater than zero. And then what are we going to do? For now, I will get the last digit and we're going to divide the number. So I will do the following. So I'm going to create here a variable called last digit. And as I mentioned, it will store it. How can we get the last digit of our credit card? We're going to get the remainder of the division between the credit card by 10. So how can we set this? We translate this into code. We're going to say credit card remainder. We're going to use the module operator 10, and this will give us the last digit. And I'm going to print F here, the last digit. So we're able to see, actually, I'm not going to print that. We're going to use the debugger. And then we need to update the value of credit card. So since we're getting the last digit, now we're going to remove this last digit from our credit card. So here I'm going to say credit card is equal to credit card divided by 10. And this is pretty much what we're going to do right now. And I will return some, but some will be zero. I just want to do the loop in here for now. Let me call the function. So int, oops, int sum every other digit. I will call our function every other digit. And then we need to send the credit card as a parameter to this function. All right, so let's understand what's going on. I'm going to do here, make credit. Let's see if we have any bugs. No, debug 50 credit. And let's see what's going on. So let's suppose I'm adding here the number 4567. Okay. If I click enter here, we're gonna, we have here our credit card 4567, and we're going to enter in our every other digit function. For now, we're initializing our variable sum, but we're not doing anything yet. Let's see what's going on in our while loop. So here, our condition is we're going to loop while credit card is greater than zero. So since for now, credit card is 4567, this number is greater than zero. So we're going to enter in the while. Then in this variable here, in this line, we're creating a variable called last digit, and we're getting the remainder of credit card divided by 10. The remainder will be seven. So here in the last digit, we'll, be, we'll see the number seven. Okay, so this way we were able to get the last digit. Now, if I divide the credit card by 10, we're going to get in here. Now we have our new number is 456. We removed the last digit from our code. And now we're going to do the while checking again. So 456 is greater than zero. Yes. So we're going to enter in this while again. We're going to get the last digit. What will be the last digit for now? It will be the remainder of the division of 456 by 10. So the remainder is six. And now our last digit is six. When we divide 456 by 10, we're going to have the number 45. So this way we are removing the last digit again. Since 45 is greater than zero, we're going to enter this if state in this while. We're going to get the last digit. So 45 divided by 10, the remainder is five. So last digit is five. And if we divide 45 by 10, our number will be four. So now our credit card is equal to four. Four is greater than zero. So we continue in our while loop. Now we're going to get the remainder, the last digit. Since the last digit is the only digit we have in our credit card. So if we divide four by 10, the remainder will be exactly four. And if we divide four by 10, we're going to have that credit card. Now it's zero. Since zero is not greater than zero anymore, we finish our while and we finish the code. So with this, we were able to see that this way we can get each digit that we're looping, right? But this is not our goal. Our goal is that we want to get only every other digit. So in our case, we want to get the number six and number four. We don't want to get all of the four digits. Let's implement a little bit of more of logic in here. I'm going to create a Boolean variable. Okay. That I'm going to call is alternate digit. And I want to initialize is alternate digit equals to false. Because I just want to get the digits when is alternate digit is equal to true. Otherwise, I don't want to get. And why is that? Why are we initializing with false? Because in the first iteration, four will be false. So we're not never going to see this uh, number. We're not, not going to do anything. But in the next iteration is alternate. We're going to become this to true. So then we're going to manipulate this number one. And then in the next iteration, we won't see the zero. In the other iteration, we will see the zero. Okay, so here I'm creating this alternate. Now let's implement the logic. I will only do what we're doing here in our line 17. If is alternate digit is equals to true. All right, so I just want to get our line 19. If alternate digit is equals to true. And I will update the value of card every time. So in here, I'm going to do the following. I will say that sum will be equal to sum plus last digit. So now we're going to get the sum of the last digit in here. Okay. We're going to get the sum of all the digits we want only. So let's run the code again. So if I make credit and debug 50, let's see what's going on in here. 
I will put the number 45, 67 again, okay? And now our goal, we just want to get the number 6 and 4 because this is the alternate digits, starting from number 2nd to last digit. So we want to start from the number 6. Here, as I mentioned, we are initializing this variable is alternate digit equals to false. Now let's start our while. Is 45, 45, 67 greater than 0? Yes, so we're entering this if state in this while loop. Now we're going to check. Is alternate digit is equal to true? No, here we can see that it's equal to false. So we won't read the line 17 and 18. We will directly to line 20 where we're going to remove our last digit that is 7. So when we run in here, our updated credit card now is 456. Then I already see here that I have one, uh, one bug. One thing that we have to do, we have to change the value of is alternate digit to the opposite value of is alternate digit. So we always, we're going to, in one case, we're going to be true, in the other case, false, true and false. So I'm going to say is alternate digit equals to the opposite of out is alternate digit and why we can use this notation exclamation mark is alternate digit exclamation mark here means not and what is not false is true and what is not true is false since it's a boolean we only can have true values true or false so every time we want we say not the current value it will be the opposite value that we want okay so let me run all over again and we're gonna go in here i'm gonna make credit and now it will work debug 50 credit so again i will put the number here 14567 and we have here our is alternate equals to false and our number oops i don't know what happened here let's run the debugger one more time 4567 okay i have here is alternate is false and our credit card number is 4567 in the next line we're going to check if 4567 greater than zero yes so we're going to enter in the while now we're going to check is alternate digit equal to true? No, because the current value is false. So we're going to skip this if statement. And now we're going to change the value of is alternate to be not false. So what is not false? When we run in here, our the value of is alternate digit will be true. And now we're going to remove the last digit. So this way, we are not starting from the last digit. We're starting from second to last. Okay. In the next iteration, we have 456 greater than zero. So this is true. Then we're going to check. Is alternate digit equals to true? Yes. Right. So we're going to enter in this if statement and we're going to get the last digit. So as we know, the last digit we can get by the remainder of a division by 10. So our last digit will be the number six. In our line 18, we're saying, I want to update the value of sum by doing the current value of sum that is zero plus last digit that is six. Now the value of sum will be six. We're going to update the value of is alternate and now we're going to say is alternate is, is equal to not true. What is not true is false. So now our is alternate is false. And we're going to remove the number six of our credit card. So now we have the number 45. 45 is greater than zero. So we keep in the while loop. Is alternate digit is equal to true? No, it's false. So we're going to skip the zip statement and we're going to update the value of is alternate digit. So now is alternate digit will be not false so this means that it will be true then we're going to remove the last digit of our number so it will be four and we're going to check four is greater than zero yes so we're going to keep in the while is alternate digit equal to true yes so we're going to enter in this if statement we're going to get the number four and we're going to sum four in our sum so then sum will be equal to ten we're going to change our is alternate digit to be false now and we're going to divide our credit card number by ten so four divided by ten is zero and now we finish our loop because zero is not greater than zero and then we're going to return sum so the way that we're doing here we were able to get every other digit starting from second to last but this is great all right this part is great but this is not enough. We don't want only to sum this every other digit starting to, from second to last. We want to get this number and multiply by two. Once we multiply by two, we need to add the product's digits. So as we can see in here, when we multiply here, the numbers we have 2, 0, 0, 12, and 8. But we're not going to do 2 plus 12 plus 8. That would give us 22. We're going to sum the digits. So it will be 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 8, and it would give us 13. So now we need to work with the logic of multiplying the every other digit starting from second to last by 2, and then add the digits of the products. To do so, I will create a new function that the idea of the function will be multiplying the number by 2 and adding the digits of the product, okay? So I'm going to create here a int multiply and sum, for example. And we're going to receive here a int, sorry, a last, a int that we're going to call last digit, all right? And since we created here this multiply and sum, I'm going to copy and paste here the prototype of our function. Remember, we always have to say here the prototype. So we're going to receive the last digit and what we have to do. We have to multiply this number by two. So I'm going to create here a int multiply that will be last digit multiplied by two. Then 
we need to check if this number contains two digits. So how are we going to do this? Even if the number has one or two digits, we can use the same logic we did in here of making a while the number is greater than zero, we're always going to uh, sum the number. So I'm going to create here the sum variable and I'm going to say while multiply is greater than zero. What are we going to do? I'm going to get the last digit of this multiplication. So for example, here, if we have the number 12, I want to get first the number two and sum, and then I want to get the number one and sum. So here I'm going to get the last digit again, int last digit multiply, and we're going to say multiply the remainder of multiply by 10 will be this last digit of multiply. And then we want to sum in our sum variable. So here, last digit multiply. All right, and by the end of all, we're going to return, return sum. So let's see if it's working. I will call it in here first, and then we can call, uh, I'm gonna create here product, for example, and it will be our multiply and sum, sending the number 12. Let's suppose I have here the number 12. So I will comment out this line, and we're just gonna worry about this multiply and sum. I'm gonna comment out these two functions we're having here because I just want to focus in this one. Let's make credit and debug 50 credit and see what's going on. Actually, I won't, say the I won't send the number 12. Since it's a last digit, we need to send the number uh, 6, right? Last digit only contains one digit. So let's send the number 6 in here and see what happens. I'm sending here the number 6, so last digit is equal to 6. And we're going to multiply 6 by 2. And we know that multiply will be equal to 12. Now, this is the part that we wanted. Here, we don't want to sum the number 12, we want to sum the product's digit. So we want to sum 1 and 2. So what are we going to do? We're creating here the sum variable, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. So while this while 12 is greater than 0, since this, if this while is true, we're going to enter in this while loop. And here we're going to get the last digit of our multiply. So when we divide 12 by 10, the remainder will be true. So here this last digit multiply will be equal to true. And we're going to add true in our sum. So sum will be equal to true. Then I forgot to do one thing. We need to divide our multiply by 10, right? So multiply will be, oops, multiply will be equal to multiply by 10. So let's run our code again. Here, last digit is 6, multiply will be 12. Then we're going to initialize our sum. Since 12 is greater than 0, we're going to start our while loop. Here, 12 divided by 10, the remainder is 2, so last digit multiply is 2. We're going to add 2 in our sum, and we're going to divide our multiply by 10, returning us only the number 1. Since 1 is greater than 0, we're going to keep in our while, and now we're going to get the last digit of our multiply variable. So 1 divided by 10, the remainder is 1. Here now it's 1. 1 plus 2, our sum will be 3. If we divide 1 by 10, multiply now is 0. Since 0 is not greater than 0, we finish our uh, loop, and we're going to return sum in here. So the product is 3. So this function is working, and we're going to apply this function now in here. Okay, so I'm going to call here a variable. I'm going to do exactly what we're doing here. I'm going to call this function in here. But instead of sending the number 6, I want to send the last digit. All right, so let's see now if it works. The logic is all the same, but now instead of adding the last digit, we're adding the multiplication of last digit by 2 and checking if we have more than 2 digits in this product. All right, so I will run now the code and let's see if we get exactly this value for item 1, if we get 13 for this long card. Let's take a look. So clear, make credit, and here we'll run regularly, dot forward slash credit. If I send the number that David gave us, we should, let's print F. So here print F, percentage I, and I want to add here some every other digit. Okay, let's run it again. So make credit, dot forward slash credit. If I run in here, we're getting 11. So there might be a issue in our code, right? We should see here 13, but we're seeing 11. Let me see where is the problem and then we can work on it. All right, so I found here my book. The problem is that we are calling the function, but we're never using it. So here we don't want to sum the last digit. We want to sum the product. Okay, so now if we run against make credit dot forward slash credit, if I put the credit card number, now we're receiving 13. All right, so the first item is done. Now let's add that sum 13 to the sum of digits that weren't multiplied by 2, starting from the end. So now we're not gonna get the numbers starting from second to last, we're gonna get the other numbers we didn't work. And what are these other numbers when it's alternate is equal to false? All right, so here we can create an else statement and we can sum we can add in our sum variable the last digit. 
Okay, so here we can do exactly what we did in here, get the last digit and add the last digit in our sum. So this is everything we need to do. For the else, we're only gonna add the last digit for the if, when we're getting starting from second to last, we're adding the multiplication by two. Okay, so let's run again if I make credit and now let's see if we get the number 20. Okay, so if I run in here dot forward slash credit, if I put the number correctly, so let me get here the number, we have to see the number 20 displaying for us. And we are. This function is working. Okay, so, so far our LUMS algorithm is fine. Now we just need to work with the third item, that is, we have to check if the last digit of the sum is equal to zero. Because if it is, it's a valid card, if not, it's invalid. After we call our function, we're gonna check if, if, our sum every other digit is equal z divided by 10. We know that we can get the last digit by doing this. Is equal equals zero, okay? If it is, it's a valid number. Else, so I'm gonna work here. If it's equal to zero, it's valid. But if it's different than zero, we're gonna print F invalid and we're done with our code. And then I'm gonna return one, for example. I don't know if we need the, this, but the return one, but let's try it out. If I run here dot forward slash credit and I put the same number, but now without the number four, it will give us 17. 17 divided by 10. The remainder of 17 divided by 10 is seven, not zero. So this means that it's invalid. So this way we finish our LUMS algorithm. Since we know that it's invalid, now our goal is to check if it's Visa, Amex, or uh, what is the other, or MasterCard. All right, so let's see what we're gonna do to do this. What we know about being Amex, MasterCard, or Visa. They have a specific number. So for example, American Express has 15 digits number, MasterCard uses 16 digits number, and Visa uses 13 and 16 digits. So this is a good way of starting our approach. We need to check how many digits our credit card number has. If it's not in this range, if it's not 15, 16, 13, or 16 again, this might give us an idea. Let's first check what is the how many digits we have in our credit card number. To do so, I will create a function here that I'm going to call int number of digits, for example, and I'm going to receive our long credit card. And in here, we can do things a little bit easier than what we did for our every other digit. Here, we're going to do the same while, while credit card is greater than zero, and we just need to count how many digits we have inside. So I'm going to create here a count variable. I will initialize it zero. I'm going to say while credit card is greater than zero. I want increment our count, so I'm going to say count plus one, and I will divide our credit card number again. So credit card is equal to credit card divided by 10. So we're using the same pattern we were using here, but now our goal is only counting how many, uh, how many digits we have, and in the end I will return count. So let's put this as a prototype of our function here at the top, and I'm going to call here our function int num digits and we're going to call our function number of digits and we're going to send our credit card and here now i want to count how many digits so num digits if we run our code let's run in here so make credit oh we're missing here a semicolon great that's why it's important to always check your code and here if i do dot for slash credit i can <laughs> I paste the wrong thing, so let's copy the correct, this one in here, all right? And this number, I don't know exactly how many digits we have, so we can count. But for example, if I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we know that this credit card has eight numbers, eight digits, and now it's giving us the number eight. So we're gonna use this number of digits to help us to check how many digits we have and see if we are, if we have the correct digit for each flag, for Master, Amex, or Visa. Besides knowing how many digits we have, so besides knowing how many digits each flag has, we also have a, uh, another pattern. So all American Express numbers it starts with 34 or 37. And most MasterCard numbers it starts with 51, 52, 53, 54, or 55. And all Visa starts with four. What we have to do now, our goal is to get the first two digits, not the last digit anymore. And how can we do this? If I have the number 567, and I want to get five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I want to get the first two digits. So if I want to get 56, if I divide this number by a hundred, 
by 1000, sorry, it will give us 56, right? Or if I do 1, 2, 3 divided by 10, it will give us 12, that is exactly the first two numbers. If I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and divide by 100, it will give us 12 again. So, do you see? To get the first two digits, we have to divide by how many digits we have minus 2. Here we have three digits, we're going to divide by 10. So, 10, only 10, all right? If we have four digits, we're going to divide by 10 times 10. So that's why we have 100. If we have five digits, we're gonna divide by 10 times 10 times 10, that is 1000. So here we're gonna always divide 10 to the power of number of digits minus two, because we wanna get the first two digits. That's why it's important to have these two digits. Let's start here and checking for Amex, because Amex we know that has only 15 digits. So here I'm gonna create a Boolean, and I'm gonna say is valid Amex. And we need to send the long card credit card, and we also need to send how many digits we have. So here, int num digits. This is what we're expecting to start this function. Now, first, we need to get the first two elements, the first two digits of our credit card number. So as I mentioned, we're gonna divide the credit card number by the number of digits minus two, all right? So how can we divide this, uh, sorry, we're gonna divide by the number of, the 10 to the power of number of digits minus two. In this case, we have a function called poll that will make this 10 to the power of, okay? So let's create here, int first two digits is equals to our card credit card divided by 10 to the power of 13. How can we do this? We know that Amex is expected to have 15 numbers, 15 digits, right? So if we wanna get the first two, we need to get 10 to the power of 13, so the number of digits minus two. So here I'm gonna say PO, that is this function, 10 to the power of 13, okay? So this will give us the first two. Then we need to check, we have two checkings. The number of digits, we know that number of digits must be equal to 15, so number of digits equal to 15, and first two, digits, they must be equals to 37 or 30, uh, 34 or 37, okay? Equals to 34 or first two digits equals to 37. If this is true, we're going to return true because this means that this is a valid, this is a valid function, this is a valid Amex card, else we're going to return false. All right, let's test. I'm gonna call our, let's implement here the prototype of the function here in the top of the code. And I'm gonna call here, let me remove it. I'm gonna call our is valid Amex function. Is valid Amex. Here I will say credit card and um, digits. We need to send. Here I have a typo, great. Amex will be equals to this. If Amex is equal to true, this means that we found our credit card right? So in here, I'm going to create an else if Amex is equal to true. This means that we found our credit card. So here I'm going to print F Amex. All right. And this is pretty much what we have to do. Uh, here, this will be a Boolean. <laughs> Great. And let's try it out. Let's see what's going on. So clear, make credit, and let's use the debugger. Oh, I'm using here power. We have to import the function math here, the library math. So hash include math.h, because this math.h will help us to do 10 to the power of 13. Okay, so let's try again. Debug 50 credit. And here I will get in the tests where we have Amex. So let's see if there is a moment where we have Amex. Valid Amex credit card, card number for testing. So let's use here, this is test simplify payments for developers. So let's use this number here that starts with 37 as we saw. So if I put this credit card number in here, let me remove, oops, let me remove the spaces. Why I'm not able to, 37, 14, I have to copy one at a time, I believe. Here and the rest of the number, great. If we click enter, we pass here, okay, so our sum every other digit has value 80. Since 80, the, the last digit of 80 is zero, this means that it's valid. Now we're gonna check if it's Amex. So if we enter in here in Amex, we're gonna get the first two digits. So what are we doing? We're getting the credit card number that is this huge number in here, and we're gonna divide by 10 to the power of 13. That will be a huge number. So if we divide this, this credit card by 10 to the power of 13, we must see 37. So let's see, here 
the first two digits. Let's run again. So here, the first two digits is 37, exactly what we're expecting. Now in our if statement, we're gonna check. Number of digits is equal to 15. Yes, it is. And first two digits is equal to 34. No, but we have this or operator or first two digits is equal to 37, yes. So since this if statement is true, we're gonna return true and our Amex variable here will be equals to true. Here we're checking if the remainder of some every other digit is different than zero. Since it isn't, we're gonna skip this if statement and we're going to the else if. Amex is equal to true, so we're gonna print F Amex and we're done with our code, all right? Now we have to do the same for Visa and for MasterCard. So let's do this. So now for master, we're gonna do the same. The only thing is, if we take a look in here, MasterCard, the number of digits will be 16 and the starting numbers will be between 51 and 55. So this is our goal. I'm gonna copy exactly what we did for is valid Amex and I'm gonna create here is valid MasterCard. MasterCard, for example. The first two uh, numbers now, we know that our number will be exactly 16. So now we have to get, we're gonna do 10 to the power of, of 16 minus two, so it will be 14. And we're gonna check if the number of digits is 16. And here we need to check if our number, if our first two digits is greater than, is greater than 50 or less than 56. All right, so here is greater than 50. And so we're checking if it's in this range. First two digit is less than 56. Okay, then we're gonna return true or we're gonna return false. So let me copy here this, let me paste here, and I'm gonna create a variable that I'm gonna call master, and here I'm gonna say mastercard, and we're gonna do another else if, but now for mastercard. So if master is equal to true, what we have to display in here, I think is mastercard all in uppercase. Yes, so here I'm gonna say MasterCard. All right, let's test. Let's see if it's working. So now we're gonna get inside of our master function and do the same steps. So make, oops, make credit, debug 50 credit, and let me get here a valid MasterCard. Let's get this number. Here if I put 55, 55, 55, 444, okay. We see here that 60 is the sum of every other digit and the remainder of 60 by 10 is zero, so it's valid. Now we're gonna check our master function. Here, if you saw Amex is false, all right? We didn't pass in, in Amex, but we're gonna see in a bit. So here we're gonna get the credit card number and divide to 10, divide by 10 to the power of 12 or 14. So here the first two digits will be 55. And here we're gonna check if number of digits is equal to 16, it is true. And first two digits is greater than 50. Yes, 55 is greater than 50. And first two digits is less than 56. Yes, 55 is less than 56. So we are returning true, right? So when we go back here to our main function, Amex is false, MasterCard is true. So this if statement we will skip, but now since master is equal to true, we're gonna print master. Okay, now let's do the last one for Visa. So Visa will be something pretty similar, but with a little bit of difference. Here, Visa can be either 13 or 16 digit number, but they are will always start with four. So we're gonna do two if statements. We're gonna check if uh, the number divided by 13 if the number has 13 digits and divided by 11 will give us four, we'll divided by 12 will give us four. And then we're gonna do another if statement that the number of digits is 16 and the card divided by 15 is equal to four. So let's implement, let's implement in here. I'm gonna copy the same pattern we did for Amex and MasterCard. And here I'm gonna check valid visa. I will check before doing this. So let me remove this from here. I want to check first. Let's do all from scratch. I want to check first if num digits is equals equals 13. So if num digits is equals equals 13, I want to get the first digit, not the first two, because we know that the first digit is equals to zero, to four. So now if the number of digits is 13, to get the first digit is 12. And we're going to say if first digit is equals equals four, we're going to return true. Else if we're going to check if num digits is equals equals 16, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 16 digits. And again, we're gonna do exactly what we did in here. We need to check if the division of the credit card number to the power of 15 right now is equals to four. Else, we're gonna return false because this means that it's not a valid visa, all right? So let me 
implement this code in here, this function, visa, and we're gonna do our last else if visa is equals true. We're gonna print f visa, go to the next line, and here I need to call our function visa. So here I'm gonna say visa and visa. And it's important here, if it's not invalid by how many digits we have, and here it's not Amex, MasterCard, or Visa, we're gonna say else printf invalid, because in another, when we were checking the other cards, it wasn't valid, so we're gonna be careful here if it's invalid or not. Okay, so let's run our Visa to finish our testing, and then we're gonna make, submit, make the check 50. Let me see here, it is complaining about line 64. Um, let me see, we're always returning, okay, instead of this else, I will just return false. I believe this is the problem we're facing. Okay, let's run again, so make credit, great, out for slash credit, and now let's get a visa number. Here David uses a visa number, and let's see if this is valid or not. So if I run, it's getting us visa. Okay, this is pretty much what we have to do. Now let's run the check 50 and see if it's working. So now we implemented the whole logic. Hopefully we will be able to pass the tests. Okay, here we should return one. I think this is the problem it is complaining when we have invalid. So let's return one here and then I believe we will pass. So let's do check 50 one more time. Oh, okay, now I saw it's expecting here, here's zero, not one. <laughs> Let's try one more time. <laughs> Another mistake here, backslash n, and now it will run. So let's do check 50 one more time. So that's pretty much what we have for this problem. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, send here on the comment or join our Discord community. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Are you interested in learning how to code? If so, it's important to know where you're starting from. Taking a prognostic quiz can help you get a sense of your current skill level and give you a starting point for your journey. Check out our free quiz at the description at the end of the video and get your personalized study plan.